In the last video, we saw how to make use of the context API to pass data through the component tree. In this video, let us discuss two more points about the context API. The first point is that you can set a default value to your context. And the default value is set while creating the context. It is passed as an argument to the create context method. Now in usercontext.js, I will add the string code evolution as the default value. Back in app component, I will comment out the provider component. If you save all the files and take a look at the browser, you should be able to see the text hello code evolution. If I add the component back and take a look at the browser, you can see that hello Vishwas is being displayed. So the default value will only be used when a component does not have a matching provider above it in the component tree. The second and final point to discuss about is the context type property. In the last video, we learned how to use the consumer component to consume the context value. Turns out there is another way to do that. And that is using the context type property on a class. Let's see how that works by consuming the user context value in component E. The first step in usercontext.js, we need to export the user context itself. So export default user context. Second step, assign this user context to the context type property on the class. So in component e.js, outside the code for class component e, we are going to have component e dot context type is equal to user context. And make sure to import it at the top. Now in the render method, the user context value is available as this dot context. So in the render method, in addition to rendering component F, I will also include component E context, which is going to be this dot context. And then include component F. If you now save the files and take a look at the browser, you should see the expected output. Component E context, Vishwas, which is the value, and then hello Vishwas from component F. So component E also is now able to render the username. And if your application supports the public class field syntax, you can replace component dot context type with static context type is equal to user context. And the application still works the same. Now you might think this looks much simpler compared to the consumer component syntax. Why should we not just stick to context type? Well, there are two limitations. The first one is that it only works with class components. The second limitation is that you can only subscribe to a single context using context type. Many a times in your application, you need to read more than one context in which scenario the consumer component is the way to go. And the code to consume multiple contexts looks somewhat like this. You can see that we have two contexts, theme context and user context. Theme context consumer accepts a function as a child passing in the theme value. Within the function body, we have another function as a child which provides the user context value. Both of them are then passed as props to a component. All right, those are the two additional points I wanted to discuss about React context. Default values and context type. I hope you now have a good understanding of how the context API works in React. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.